this lesson, we'll be taking a look at Sketchy University's campus distillery. And okay, a distillery might not be a staple at most legitimate accredited institutions of higher education, but learning about distillation here is much more fun than in the chem lab. See, we're already starting it off with a boozy beverage. Yep, this gal's mixed drink should help you remember that distillation is a process used to separate the components of a liquid mixture. The main idea underlying this process is that generally every component in a mixture has a different boiling point. So by gradually increasing the mixture's temperature, you can evaporate and extract the components of the mixture one at a time. There are a few different types of distillation, each of which is used under different conditions. In this sketch, we'll review simple distillation, vacuum distillation, and fractional distillation. To start, let's keep things simple. There are generally two conditions that must be met for simple distillation to be used. The first condition is that there must be more than a 25 degrees Celsius difference in the boiling points of the mixture's components. To represent that 25 degree difference, this guy is flipping a 25 cent coin in front of a delta-shaped light, uh, since delta symbolize difference. And we've placed all of this distilling equipment to his right to help you remember the difference in boiling points has to be greater than this. Now, the second condition for simple distillation is that the compound you're trying to purify must have a boiling point below 150 degrees Celsius. That's why this simple setup is to the left of that tank that's boiling at 150 degrees. Now, let's take a closer look at this equipment to see the anatomy of a simple distillation apparatus. The original, unpurified mixture goes in a glass container called a distilling flask, which you can remember by this flask-shaped beaker. A glass column extends from the distilling flask, then connects it to a horizontal tube called a condenser. Cold water is usually flushed around the outside of the condenser, so we've added some condensation to this tube to remind you of the word condenser and to help you remember that it gets flushed with cold water. Finally, the condenser connects to a receiving flask, which collects purified product. In the case of an actual distillery, this would be whiskey. So we've made a whiskey barrel the final repository of this apparatus. Now, before all of you start sending angry letters, no, this is not what the distillation apparatus would actually look like in a chemistry lab or an actual distillery. In a lab, the components would usually be made of boring glass stuff. And in a distillery, it's usually a bunch of fancy metal tanks. But neither of those make for very fun visuals. So here we are. Okay, enough background info. Let's get into the nitty gritty of how simple distillation actually works. And luckily, for once, it's actually very straightforward. Here's how it goes. First, the mixture in the distilling flask is heated. As the temperature rises, the component with the lowest boiling point should evaporate, while the rest of the mixture remains a liquid. Kind of like how the ethanol in this whiskey mix has vaporized while the water stays behind. And just to be clear, ethanol vapor is, uh, well, clear. We've just made it whiskey colored here to help you visualize the process. Anyways, as the gas rises out of the distilling flask, it enters the condenser. Remember the water around the outside of the condenser that I mentioned earlier? Well, it cools the gas so that it condensates back into a liquid. At this point, the liquid should be mostly a single compound, rather than a mixture. Finally, the liquid in the condenser pours into the receiving flask. And that's it. You've got your purified product, which is sometimes called the distillate. So we've added a label to this barrel reminding you that it's a late vintage. And no, I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's expensive. Okay, there's one last term you might hear when it comes to distillation. That's superheating. Like what these mega flames are doing to this container. Superheating occurs when a substance doesn't boil at its boiling point. And we've added this taut film over the beaker surface to remind you that superheating is often caused by strong surface tension. This can exert too much pressure on a liquid for it to evaporate. And then when the surface tension does break in a superheated fluid, it causes really rapid vaporization that can be pretty dangerous and even explosive. Needless to say, all of this is bad news for distillation. So chemists often use automatic stirrers or little beads called boiling chips to help reduce surface tension and prevent superheating. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's move on to vacuum distillation and fractional distillation. Luckily, both of these use the same basic setup as simple distillation, but they each add a slight modification. Let's start with vacuum distillation, which we'll represent with this vacuum. <laughs> Don't have to win a Nobel to figure that one out. 
This vacuum is to the right of the 150 degree tank because vacuum distillation is used to purify compounds with a boiling point over 150 degrees Celsius. And the only difference between simple distillation and vacuum distillation is that vacuum distillation is done in a vacuum to lower the compound's boiling point. Heating a mixture up too much can degrade the final product, and lowering the mixture's boiling point in a vacuum prevents this. See, even though this vacuum is clearly getting hot, it was specifically designed to stay intact. Even when the cleaning gets rough, just saying, that thing has seen one too many vomit puddles. Finally, there's fractional distillation, which we've symbolized with the fractions on these glasses. We're off to the left of the delta light and the quarter flipper because this technique is used when compounds in a mixture have less than a 25 degree difference in their boiling points. This technique follows the same process as simple distillation, but a special column connects the distillation flask to the condenser. That's why these fancy glasses are so column-like. Fractional columns have extra surface area, which allows vapor to condensate along the column to re-vaporize many times before actually reaching the condenser. This ensures that only the liquid with the lower boiling point is condensed in the receiving flask. Otherwise, when boiling points are similar, multiple compounds could vaporize simultaneously and the distillation wouldn't work. All right, well, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Let's boil it down to the highlights, the distilled version, if you will. Distillation is a technique used to separate and purify liquids. Simple distillation works by heating a mixture so that the component with the lowest boiling point evaporates. Then the evaporated component enters a condenser, where it's cooled back into a liquid. Finally, the liquid in the condenser pours into the receiving flask as a purified product known as the distillate. Superheating is one problem that can arise during distillation. This occurs when surface tension and atmospheric pressure prevent a substance from boiling at its boiling point. Vacuum distillation is used to purify compounds that have a boiling point over 150 degrees Celsius. This process works the same as simple distillation, but it's done using a vacuum to lower the mixture's boiling point. This prevents the distillate from being degraded by super high temperatures. Finally, there's fractional distillation, which is used when the components of a mixture have boiling points less than 25 degrees Celsius apart. Fractional distillation also follows the same process as simple distillation, but it uses a special column with extra surface area to ensure that only the component with the lowest boiling point enters the condenser and is purified. Well, what do you know? We've covered just enough chemistry for me to need a drink, and a strong one. So I'm off to enjoy the products of distillation. See you later.